In this video, I'll be showing you how both the scalar product form and the Cartesian form of a plane's equation are derived starting from a normal to the plane, as well as the coordinates of a point contained in the plane. I'll also be showing you how to find the perpendicular distance from a plane to the origin. The objective of this video being for you to really develop an understanding of the equations we use when working with 3D planes. Now on the right hand side here you can see that I've drawn a plane in three dimensional space, as well as a normal vector to the plane which I've called n, and a point a which is contained in the plane. Now I'll go ahead and say that the point a has coordinates x sub 0, y sub 0, and z sub 0, and I'll say that the normal vector n has components a, b, and c. Okay, I'll also draw the position vector of this point a, so that would be this blue vector I'm drawing right now, leaving the origin and pointing towards point a, so something like this, that's the vector, and I'll go ahead and call that vector a. Last but not least, I'll add a completely generic point p on my plane, whose position vector is the one I'm drawing right now, so that's this dotted vector right here. There we go, points towards P, and I'll call that position vector R, and so R has components X, Y, and Z. Now, just to be clear, when I say a generic point P, I mean a point that could be absolutely anywhere on the plane, which is why its components are the variables X, Y, and Z. To reach the scalar product form of a plane's equation, we consider this yellow vector I'm drawing right now joining point A to the generic point P. Now, since both A and P are contained in the plane, this yellow vector must also be contained in the plane. Furthermore, using the fact that P has a position vector R and A has a position vector A, this yellow vector is in fact a vector R minus A. And now here's how we get the scalar product form of a plane's equation. Using the fact that the normal vector n is by definition orthogonal to all the vectors contained in the plane, the scalar product or dot product of n with any vector contained in this plane must be equal to zero. Consequently, we can go ahead and state that the dot product of n and the yellow vector r minus a has to equal to zero. And now using the distributive property of the dot product, we can rewrite this result as n dot r minus n dot a, and that's equal to zero. Finally, rearranging this equation, we can state that n dot r has to equal to n dot a. And we could write this result in terms of the components of the vectors. Indeed, using the fact that vector a would be the position vector with components x sub 0, y sub 0, z sub 0, this last result turns into the dot product of the normal a, b, c, and the position vector x, y, z, equals to the dot product of the same normal, so that's a, b, c, and the position vector of a, so that's x sub 0, y sub 0, and z sub 0. Given an actual context or an exam question in which the coefficients a, b, and c would be known, as well as the coordinates of the point a, then we'd be able to calculate the scalar product on the right hand side here, and it would be equal to some number which I'll just go ahead and call capital D. And using this, we could go ahead and write the scalar product form of a plane's equation as the scalar product of a, b, c, and x, y, z equals to d. And I'll go ahead and box that result. That's the scalar product form of a plane's equation, which I could also just write as n dot r equals to d. There we go. And since the point P with components x, y, z is completely generic, this equation holds or will be true for any point contained in this plane. Now, if I actually go ahead and calculate the scalar product on the left-hand side of this equation, then this result turns into the Cartesian equation of a plane. Indeed, on the left-hand side, I'd have ax plus by plus cz, and that would equal the d. And I can go ahead and write that. That would be ax plus by plus cz equals to d. And I'll go ahead and box that as well. That's the Cartesian equation of a plane. And so that's how we can derive these two results. Now, to finish, let me add something about the value of the right-hand side here, this capital D. 
the value of capital D is in fact a scalar multiple of the perpendicular distance from the plane to the origin. And to really see why that is, it's important to remember where that number actually comes from. It comes from the dot product of the normal n with the position vector of point a. And let me start by drawing a sort of side view of the plane. So imagine that we're looking at the plane from the side here, and so we're just seeing a flat surface like so. And to really make that clear, I'll just say that that's the plane. There we go, and I'll point towards it. The normal vector n would be perpendicular to the plane, like so. That's my normal vector n, and I'll draw a right angle here. And we have the position vector of point a, and I'll just say point a is here, and this is the position vector a. There we go. And so this starting point here would be the origin, which I'm calling O, and I'll just draw some dotted lines here. That's the perpendicular projection of point O onto the plane, like so. Now the distance from the plane to the origin is the length of this dotted line here. And if I were to say for a second that the angle between that dotted line and the vector A is theta, then the distance from the plane to the origin, which I'll go ahead and call D, could be found using right angle trigonometry. Indeed, since cosine of this angle theta would be equal to d divided by the length of a, we could quickly see that d equals to the magnitude of vector a times cosine of theta. And so that would be the distance from the plane to the origin. But the dot product we have here, n dot a, is given by the following. We'll have n dot a equals to the magnitude of n times the magnitude of a times cosine of theta. And as we've just seen, the magnitude of a times cosine of theta is equal to the distance d. Consequently, unless n is a unit normal vector, the product we have on the right-hand side here will be some scalar multiple of the distance d. And so using the fact that I called n dot a capital D, we can state that capital D is equal to the magnitude of the normal vector we used times the distance d where d is the distance from the plane to the origin. And we could even rearrange that to find a formula for the distance from a plane to the origin. Indeed, we could state that lowercase d is equal to capital D over the magnitude of the normal vector n. And we usually write this capital D inside an absolute value in case this dot product is negative. And I'll go ahead and box this result. It's worth making a note of as well. Finally, let me also draw your attention towards this result and say that if we had chosen our normal vector n to be a unit normal vector, then the magnitude of n would be equal to 1, and capital D would be equal to the distance from the plane to the origin. Indeed, going back to the result we have here with the scalar product form, if we replace this normal vector n by a unit normal vector, which would look something like this, we'd have our unit normal vector n dot r, which would be equal to the unit normal vector n dot a, then the scalar product on the right-hand side would simply equal to lowercase d. And we could write this as the unit normal n dot r equals to d. And so at times it can be quite useful to use a unit normal vector to the plane instead of just a normal vector, as it leads to a Cartesian equation of the form ax plus by plus cz equals to lowercase d where d is the distance from the plane to the origin. And there we go, we now have a much better idea of how to derive the scalar product form of a plane's equation, as well as a plane's Cartesian equation. We've also seen that this capital D is a scalar multiple of the distance from the plane to the origin. We derived a formula allowing us to calculate the distance from a plane to the origin, and we finished by seeing that if we use a unit normal vector instead of a normal vector, the right-hand side of the scalar product form is in fact the distance from the plane to the origin, and the same can be said for the corresponding Cartesian equation of the plane. And there we have it. That's it for this tutorial.